So um, you're telling me that online I'm different than I am in person? Yeah. Are you recording? Yeah. Okay. Well, you differ, Alan, online from face to face in a few ways. Um, one is that you seem more skeptical, sarcastic, and critical online. Your tweets and your comments tend to have a real bite to them. Um, and it doesn't, in person, you come off as more genial. Um, uh, I'm not trying to make a value them, there. Just these, these, these are different sides of the personality. It's not Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, it's a question of emphasis. And where, you know, when I see tweets from Alan, I'm much more likely to think, uh, this is going to be something, you know, I slipped up. <laughs> I made a mistake. He caught me. Uh, you know, and I don't feel that in person. That, that, that's really interesting because I mean part of this discussion we're doing with um, DML tomorrow is um, it's for, it's to help people who are like new uh, as new kind of PhD um, scholars um, figure out you know how they're going to participate and and what their online identity is going to be and, and it often feels like um, we think of it as one thing like we have an identity and it's right. you know we, we we in every context we have this multiple variants of ourselves so you know you know so I'm, I'm kind of, when you said that i was really kind of curious because it's not like it's an alternate identity it's just like maybe an exaggeration of some aspect um, yes yes it's an enhancement or an emphasis of one part of you yeah um, i mean like your uh your blogging voice is a little different because for me again this is subjective your your blogging voice is extremely deep um, that you you dive really really deep into a subject, um, either a research subject or a technical subject, um, and you go very far into it. And part of that's the affordance of a blog, which gives you an infinite amount of writing space. And, uh, um, but also, it's a, it's a question of tone. But in your comments, when you comment somebody else's blog, when you comment on your own, you, you tend to be a bit more, um, a bit more uh, snappy, almost more like the uh, uh, Twitter side of you. Hmm. I, I think this is like a teaching persona. You know, when you get into a class, you're walking on stage, and, and you become somebody a little different, um, and uh, or a lot different. And, you know, I've seen teachers really, really change. Um, they get louder, they get quieter. Um, I mean, me, I'm sitting here on a chair, and I, I'm not moving at all. This is how I am when I'm face to face with people. But the minute I get in class, I just pace back and forth all over the place. You know, um, it's 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 really different. Can't sit still at all. Um, no, I. When your your audio and your video is more like your face to face, um, you listen. You will. You really respect uh, silence and time, and you're almost warmer. Um, and that's you know that's another side. Of it. That's really interesting. I guess that's yeah, because you know, yeah, it's because you know, you know, video, video editing so well, you know how important it is to allow time for people to absorb an image or a sound, which first time video editors often forget. They kind of blitzkrieg you through. Um, but you really allow us the chance to, to absorb that. So, watching the videos you were doing with Brian Lamb, for example, um, you know, it was, there were a lot of beats, a lot of pause. It wasn't slow, uh, it just wasn't frantic. Uh, and that's, that's a different impression than what I would get from. Reading a string of comments by you know, a string of tweets. That's, it's just really interesting to think about, like, what does going into someone's comment space change about the way you you write a voice? You know, because me, I kind of I'm in I'm in all those places, and they're all me. So I, it's it's kind of interesting to hear someone say there's a little bit different aspects. It's it's it, I, I'm fascinated by it, and so um, I'm gonna have to think about how I encapsulate your identity. Because it's like you're 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 Brian everywhere. But you know, when I think about it, you know, I've been in your home. Um, yeah. I, I've seen you. Uh, one of my favorite memories is when you did the talk at UMW, and I, I see you do this a lot. And it's what I really respect about your talks is that you just don't have this stream of content. I mean, the the part I remember you asked um, students in the UM audience about games they were playing. You know, yeah. you know, you, you basically interrupted your own presentation to in, inquire about the audience. Um, and students were raising their hands. Every game they mentioned, you not only had something to say that meant you know it, but you had something to say that meant um, you understood the game and, and 
so um, so the the breadth and depth of, of your experience and the way you engage with with an audience even I've seen you do this when people ask questions like they pop up and they they launch in the questions and you're like wait a minute who are you what's your discipline you know and they say you know I'm you know I'm Jane I teach sociology and you're like well what kind of sociology are you a you know a, a pragmatic you know you know mondist or and so um, th that bit where you um, you converse with the audience is um, is really inspiring to me. Thank you. I, I didn't I didn't used to do that. I used to be a real jerk, and uh, um, and then I, I started realizing what a, what a what a gift. Probably what, a, what what I'm in front of a class or on the stage. I feel that it's an intense gift that people are given. You know, the older I get, the, the more I realize how hard it is to do that, um, and how difficult it is for them to even put out a little bit of a response. And so I really want to honor that and accept it and encourage it and, and in so doing inspire other people to participate. Mm -hmm. um, but also I just know as, as someone off in the audience, I know too many times where a teacher or a presenter doesn't care. Uh, or they don't they don't show that they care. Right. And that's that's depressing. That's the uh, I'll tell you one thing to give you a head start. Um, several times I've met this you know, there's no word for this when you meet someone face to face if you know them online. I think of this first contact, but um, uh, but meeting them, they um, that this is weird. You're funny. <laughs> Me, so, well, you know, you tell jokes and, and you're humorous and stuff, but you're not like online. And it occurred to me, I, I don't. I mean, writing humor, writing comedy, writing jokes is a really specific skill set. Um, and it's, you know, that's why you have comedians who tell them, the writers who write this book. That's one difference, but there you go. That is, but, you know, I, I, I see you on Twitter. You engage in banter that's not necessarily topical. So, you know, it's, I mean, like, like poke the bear. I mean, I, that's what I enjoy about that space. It's just occasionally um, trying to, you know, tease something out of someone um, playfully um, in, in a way that, you know, it's not just about, I've got this thing to show or talk about or, or um, this important piece of work um, just to goof around a little bit. Yeah. Well, you, you bring that out in me. And a lot of times, I, I, a lot of people don't do that. And increasingly, the subjects that we talk about are so distressing that um, if, if I'm in a party, you know, if people are too depressed, I'll try and lighten the mood. I, I don't feel that online. Mm -hmm. I don't have responsibility for that. Um, and often I'm distressed and I want to push it. I want to figure out what's going on. I want to figure out is there a solution? You know, is there a place we can go to make this better? Speaking of places to go, I'm going to have to get up my. That's, that's fine. I'm going to stop recording, but th thanks for letting me get that little bit. It's going to be helpful. <laughs>